everyone and welcome to the Airpack Certification Channel. I'm Clarice Fidel and today we'll be talking about the importance of the details during the design and safety analysis. And to talk about that, I have a very uh, special guest. I'm here today with Frederic Contenot, that's a senior safety and reliability engineer. If you want to know more about his professional journey, his contact information will be in the description letter. But before we start, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell to be aware every time that we upload a new video. And if you like our video, give us a thumbs up. So welcome aboard and enjoy your journey. Hi, Rodrigo. How are you? Hello, Clarissa. I'm fine, thank you. And you? I'm very good, thank you. Thank you very much for being here with us today. My pleasure. Before we start, can you uh, do a brief introduction about yourself? Yes. Hello, my name is Frederick Contreno. I'm a safety and reliability engineer. I have been working in the aerospace industry for more than 25 years. I like it very much. I travel all around the world and I really love every day the new challenge of this profession. Okay, thank you very much for being here with us. And today you'll be talking about the importance of the details when you are performing safety analysis, right? Yes. Okay, so jumping into the subject, uh, you mentioned that you, you uh, explained that using um, uh, uncontained engine rotor failure uh, as a case study. So can you first uh, tell us what happened in this accident? In 2010, there was an A380 which was taking off from Singapore airport flying towards Sydney. Just after takeoff, about 7,000 feet above ground level, the engine number two sustained an engine rotor burst. Okay, so um, it was an investigation after that, and what was the conclusions of this um, investigation? The, what, what they found? The, 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 uh, the, what happened was exactly what they predicted during the certification process? Good question. We can see here a picture of a engine uh, with the result of uh, uncontained engine rotorverse. So we can see that on this engine, the uh, turbine uh, detached and went through the engine cases. And what caused this damage? After the Australian Transportation Safety Bureau and the engine manufacturer conducted the investigation, they found that the main reason was the failure of lubrication tube inside the engine. I would like to explain in more detail what were the consequences uh, of the rotor burst and what was mostly the cause. So here is a picture of the element of, con of, of, of an engine with the model 5 IP turbine, which was the one that detached from the aircraft. Let's focus more into the oil feed. There was an investigation that was made by the ATSB, Australian Transportation Safety Bureau, and the engine manufacturer. And we're going to see in more details what happened. Here is a cross section of an oil feed pipe that brings the oil inside the engine, inside the bearing chamber where you have the bearings, and they need to be lubricated. So the pipe goes through a buffer space here where there is normally no oil and then brings the, delivers the oil to the bearing chamber. There's a filter element here 
which is used to filter the oil prior to lubricate the bearings. In order to accommodate this filter, the walls of the field pad needs to be machined and that can result in a thinner wall from the feed pipe. Here is a cross section of the feed pipe. During manufacturing, it was off centered. Therefore, it resulted with a thinner wall in the oil feed pipe. When the oil goes with pressure into this feed pipe, it results into a fatigue crack. We can see here the connection of the oil feed pipe that goes towards the bearing chamber. And here, a thinner wall. That's the remnants remaining of the oil. Let's focus now into a cross section of the engine where we can see the turbine disc that detached from the engine. Let's also pay attention to this drive arm here, which is the connection between the turbine and the rotating shaft. And very important is this oil pipe, the buffer space here where there is normally no oil. And here is the bearing chamber where oil comes to lubricate this bearing. On that day, there was a fatigue crack here on the walls of the oil pipe. The temperature in this volume is around 370 degrees Celsius. The auto ignition temperature of the oil is 280. Therefore, the result was an auto ignition of the oil inside this buffer space, where in normal condition there is no oil. We can guess now what's going to happen when the fire will propagate to this area and we will overheat the drive arm. The fire propagates, overheats the drive arm. This result into the fracture of the drive arm from the turbine. That means that now the turbine is not loaded anymore and it's free to accelerate. And we can see this from this picture. In normal condition, we would have friction and the prediction of the uh, manufacturer would like, we would have friction in this part to slow down the turbine. That was based on this assumption. Let me explain what is this. In case of a sharp fracture, or in case of a detachment of the turbine, between the turbine and the compressor, we can see in normal condition, what would be the delivery pressure from the compressor towards the turbine. Once you have a detachment very quickly, the delivery pressure falls and therefore, that result into a control energy towards the turbine. But on that day, and it has not been anticipated before, and it never happened in the past, there was a partial recovery of the engine compressor from here to here. And this additional level of energy here and pressure was enough to accelerate the detached turbine 
to a level where it oversped and burst. So basically, uh, the this accident happened for two main reasons, right? That one is that we have a manufacturing uh, deviation that was not um, uh, perceived during the manufacturing process uh, that resulted in a failure condition that cascaded to uh, a detachment of the uh, turbine uh, associated with a behavior that uh, following this, this failure that was not foreseen during the original analysis. Is that correct? Yes, it was not anticipated uh... Uh, to occur in that way. So, and, and after uh, it was learned that this could happen, so what uh, uh, was done to fix it? Following this accident, there were a series of inspection and additional maintenance action to inspect the potential uh, defective oil pipes. Okay, so then uh, inspections out during the uh, manufacturing process and also for the airplane that were in service. There were additional instructions to the operators during the manufacturing and the machining of the oil pipe, especially during drilling the inside diameter to make sure we have not thinner walls uh, what is uh, expected okay so in this in this case so that we are uh, talking about a risk assessment and evaluation of the risk level that we are uh, those actions were taken to um, control or reduce the likelihood of occurrence because you have more controlled process or better instructions to prevent it, it happens. However, it doesn't mean that it will never happen again. And then you should have those that behavior that would cause the overspeed. So there's anything else that was done in, in, in terms to control the impact? Um, yes. To reduce the, the, uh, the hazard, uh, the severity of the, the, the issue? Yes. In addition to these uh, new manufacturing uh, rules and process, there has been an additional level of protection that has been added via the engine control software. Okay, so that was implemented like an overspeed control or some monitoring to, in the case of this failure happen again, we have some uh, additional barrier protection. Yes, briefly, uh, how it works is uh, you control the air around the turbine and you also control the speed of the compressor and there's some logics that combine this to uh, stop the engine in case of a potential acceleration of the turbine. This is really interesting because the, it was act in the both sides, right? To reduce the likelihood of the occurrence and also to uh, con uh, reduce the impact. So then you control uh, better the risk and bring it back to the uh, an acceptable level. Yes, it goes towards the mitigation of the risk and bringing the risk down to an acceptable level. Yeah, I mentioned that in my video about uh, uh, safety assessment, so if you didn't uh, see it uh, yet, you can see in the link um, that you appear in your screen. And also I would like to mention that is a really nice example of the uh, risk assessment activity and continuing in continuing networkness uh, process, that you have all the process, the, the safety life process that you go do some assumptions during the safety assessment phase and then the uh, life shows something different and then you go and feedback that. So this is really interesting, uh, an example how it works. Right? Yes, Larissa. And in addition to that, I would like to add that from this accident, we also can learn about the confirmation of the models, the rotor burst models, which are explained in the AC 2128. Okay, 
that's the AC that have the guidelines uh, to evaluate the uh, engine uh, and contained the uh, rotor failure um, hazard, right? Yes, and I would like to uh, show you a picture of one part of the engine. On this picture, this is just the stage behind the turbine that separated into third of a disc. You can clearly see three sectors which can show that it consists of a third of a disc. And on the next picture, you can see the fragments with the risk models and the center of gravity of each third of a disc. And we use this into our safety assessment when we conduct and contain engine rotor failure analysis. This is very interesting, right? Because then we see that the guidance material provided by the certification authorities was created based on the observation what uh, happened. And then when you have a real event, you can see that the things match. So when you are using the guidance, we are going a, a, a safe path to at least do our best uh, to guarantee the safety of the design, right? That's correct. It is very important in safety to use the result of failures and to bring this back into the design in order to always improve design. You, you mentioned a really good point because we have a, a lot of new designs that are bringing new technologies in the propulsion uh, system. And what are your thoughts about uh, how these you affect those uh, analysis, uh, those safety analysis related with uh, um, uncontained uh, rotor failure or even other failures related with the, the engine system? With new technologies, with novel architectures, comes new risk models. And these risk models need to be assessed and discuss and validated with the certification authorities and the manufacturers. Okay, so what is the message? <laughs> the message is uh, whatever we do, we pay attention to the detail. We have a saying in safety that the devil hides into the detail and it is important to keep this in mind. Yeah, and I think that just complimenting you is that integration, integration, integration. So talk with your uh, the areas that we interface with and also be in a really close contact with the certification authorities, right? Exactly. Yeah. I like you mentioned integration <laughs> because a failure that doesn't have a big effect on a system, when you integrate this, and when you combine this with other systems at the aircraft level, can sometimes result into potential catastrophic failures. Frederick, thank you very much for being here with us and sharing your knowledge with us. You're welcome, Clarissa. I hope that you have here another opportunity to talk about another subjects. It would be with great pleasure. And if you like this video, and want to know more about Frederick's professional journey, you can uh, contact him through the link that you left in the description area. And don't forget, so if you didn't do that yet, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell to be aware every time that we upload a new video. I hope you liked this one and see you in the next.